All right, so welcome back, everybody. We got uh, Mr. Mike Goff. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Um. Well, boy, every okay, everybody recording. There we go. Um. Creator, am I right on that? Uh, no. Digital music magician. No. No. Okay. Um, if I may. Go ahead. You know more about it than I do. Can you see my screen? I didn't share. I didn't click the share button, but. No. No. Okay. All right. Then it's going to force me to uh, to do that as you told me to do. Yep. Now we can see it. Okay. I'm just trying to get it into that mode. So. I would like everybody to understand that uh, that this program was built back in 2005. There have been a couple of uh, of uh, folks that know how to to code that uh, whatever code this was built in back in 2005. But I also want people to understand that this was born of the vision of Bill Heyman. Uh, I'm sorry, I get that wrong every time. Bill Hyman. Bill and I speak probably monthly. We've been friends for years, and I still see H-E-Y-M-A-N and say Heyman instead of Hyman. But it is Bill Hyman. Uh, some of the older folks, um, not age-wise, but square dance and music-wise, uh, probably remember that that uh, dosido.com was owned and operated by Bill Hyman. And Bill, back around uh, 2003, 2004, I forget which music producer he said it was, but but... He and that music producer collaborated and created the first MP3s. So uh, I consider Bill kind of the uh, kind of the father of MP3s. Also, because when other music producers came online, he became their sole provider, their sole distributor, and Bill was the one that maintained all the licenses uh, to do what needed to be done to to. Um, uh, have people purchase mp3 music so he took on a lot of the responsibility from the music producers in order to make mp3s available so bill hyman is a very important man in square dance just, just like bill i'm not comparing him to bill peters i promise you i'm, I'm not uh, i'm not comparing him to, to them or or pappy or any of those other giants uh, i'm just uh comparing bill to to uh the vision that he had to bring MP3s to square dance and round dance, et cetera, communities. So Bill Bill Hyman came up with it. Bill is still alive and kicking up in uh, up in North uh, uh, New Hampshire. I'm sorry, and uh, he turned di digital music over to me about two years ago. Uh, I was one of a couple uh, of of his um, uh, beta testers, so to speak. And uh, so a lot of us were working with Bill about what what should be in, what should be taken out, what should be changed, et cetera, et cetera. So Bill went through that process for a number of years until it got to the point where he was no longer going to put any more money into DMM. Hence, uh, DMM is, is where it is now. Uh, not to be compared with, but in association, kind of, sort of, with, uh, with Thomas Bannard in, in Sweden, who created Squareview. Um, uh, they both sort of talked with each other. They, they formed a bond, a friendship, and, um, they worked together on, on different things with regards to the electronic version of, of, of music and the electronic versions of cue sheets. Um, uh, so that's kind of where it all started. And that's where I kind of come in. I am a square dance caller. Uh, I have been calling since about 1999. Um, all of it was in was in Germany until I left a couple of years ago and returned back to the states. So essentially, it's digital music magi magician, which will get you to uh, the website. These are the same type features, without a doubt. Although I have not compared them specifically with with Square View or Vic Seaver's product, I know Vic has one out there. But these are some of the things that are out there. What I would consider one of the most important things. Uh, is my cursor able to be seen there, waving around there, Mark? Yes, it is. is my cursor. Okay, this is kind of one of the most important things that I would have to I would have to point out to anybody who wanted to use DMM. 
what essentially happened is as MP3 music came out up until August of 2014, Bill put that into a database, which he built into DMM. So what that means is when somebody adds a piece of music, whether they uh, whether they do it uh, by, by one of the two or three means to add music to the library, if they go into a particular screen or a, again, for all, I'm only talking about music prior to August 2014, then you can search for that piece of music, uh, regardless of which producer, it'll come up with all any and all producers that created that music. And you can find the one that pertains to the piece of music you're doing. You can click on it, and then all the fields of DMM will populate with the title, the the uh, uh, the producer, and the and the record number, uh, and a few other uh, tiles across the screen, which I'll show show you in a little bit. The reason why that disappeared in 2014 is because that's essentially when when the dosido.com computer that stored all of that data and all of the dosido.com website information ceased to exist um, because dosido.com was sold off to uh, Tom and Pam Dillinger of Palomino. And then with the, with the unfortunate uh, death of, of Tom, it was right around the 2014 area when, when all of that information then got sold off to Paul Cote. So nobody was inputting any more information into the database that collected all the music titles and all that information that could be populated on a screen. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. So these are roughly the features. Again, probably the same as Vix and, and uh, Tomas's. Um, so if somebody goes down there, they do not have to purchase it. I put that out on the Newbies website. I believe that's why maybe Mark got a hold of me. Um, so they do not have to click buy now. All they need to do is go down to this part of the web page and, and uh, download the, uh, the readme file and also the exec file, the exe file to literally install DMM. Any questions, comments so far? Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. No, no comments in the chat yet, or okay. nobody raising their hand. Yeah, just doing a check. So uh, when it comes to the install, it's pretty much like anything else. There are a couple of hiccups with the last uh, with the last generation that uh, um, that 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 Bill got a um, got a computer expert to go into and do some things. Um, so there's a couple of errors that pop up, just click ignore. Then once somebody uh, fires up DMM, then this screen will come up. This, this was Bill's way of keeping people from stealing his product. So he came up with a mechanism that required somebody to contact him, which is now me, to provide this code, which in turn Bill, now me at the time, will produce a key which marries up with the code. So once somebody puts the key in, clicks OK, then all the features of DMM are activated. Whereas Squareview and Tomas, he's made that available to everybody for free, so that that, uh, that that's not required of him. Vic Cedar, I don't know what his process are. So um, essentially, when one installs DMM, it will, autom it will automatically create a C Digital Music Magician folder, and that is where every single file for DMM is, is stored. The most important for, for those that, that use DMM, um, some of them have learned this the hard way. I've tried to put out a couple of email telling them that this library.han, which by the way, just for giggles, han was created because Bill says that Hanhurst was his music uh, business at the time. So he called the file library.han, hand for, for Hanhurst. So this is the most important file, unlike unlike uh, Tomas' Square View, where all you have to do is put all your, your music in, in one folder, then indicate that folder up on that one particular line, there's all your pattern, boom, wham, bam, there it is. Uh, unlike that, again, this was first generation stuff back in the mid-2000s not quite uh, to, the, to the extent of, of what uh, technology is today. 
So, uh, and that's one reason why I'm making this free, particularly, I think, to newbies, because I don't really think that those of us that have hundreds and thousands of pieces of music want to go into DMM and start having to manually input DM uh, music into, into, a, uh, into a library. So if you were to have some music in your library and you had DMM open and you had a um, uh, Mustang Sally with a cue sheet clicked in the, play, in the playlist, which is right here, um, then the Mustang Sally, this is not Mustang Sally's uh, uh, cue sheet, so don't, don't, don't ding me on any of this, uh, this nitpicky stuff. But the cue sheet would open up, uh, and your your uh, 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 your your music uh, 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 process would open up right there. You've got all sorts of uh, um, keyboard shortcuts for a lot of this right here. Um, I know the other programs do the same thing, um, but you can change the pitch, the tempo, the beats per minute. You can set your looping. You can manually set your your looping. Uh, DMM will automatically set it uh, at, at, at these two points or for any piece of piece of a song. Um, you can click to turn the loop on and off. You can hide the equalizer, click use equalizer, and you got a 12 band equalizer. Uh, the elapsed time will show here or the remaining time will show here. So pretty much everything that everybody else's will do. Um, over here on the playlist, if you were to have 20, 30 pieces of music, you got a big gig coming up. Sorry, I did not mean to do that. Um, let me get back to it. My apologies. If you had a bunch of music here and you get up on stage and you say, ah, uh, I want dream a little dream. I want to do this one right now. So you can drag and drop this up and down this screen. So you can drag and drop your music. Um, I can bring up DMM to show you a, a little bit more of, of what I'm talking about. Um, let me see. Let me know if you can see that new screen where it says I Irish washerman on, on the left no. side. It has not come up on the screen? No. Yeah, I okay. I, I, Mark, how do I move from one one uh, screen to, to share a screen of another of another file? Uh do I have to stop and reshare? New share. Did you share? Did you share the window or did you share the screen? Um, it's telling me I'm sharing the screen. Yeah. Okay. So when you try minimizing uh, your PowerPoint. Okay. That's minimized, but I don't think you're seeing that. No, if we're still seeing the oh now it yeah now you stopped it. Yeah. So you must yeah. have selected the PowerPoint instead of that first one that's up there. That's your screen. Okay. How's this there look? You Are you seeing? Okay, so this is this is actual uh, uh, DMM uh, that I can I can do literally. So okay, screens can be, screens can be moved around. Uh, windows rather. This your 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 library can be moved around. All these, all these things can be moved around. You can put your playlist wherever you want it, and you can you can move your player anywhere you want it. So this is the my particular setup. Um, this is on my home computer. I don't really have any music on this, but again, if I wanted to move Mustang Sally, I can simply drag and drop it up there, and there she be. Um, when it comes to a piece of music, there I am. It's, I can add it to the playlist this way, um, or I could do a right click and uh, put it to add playlist. Once I have a playlist up there, I can drag and drop music. I can take any one of these and just drag it over here and uh, uh, and it'll be it'll be added as you see. Uh, so drag and drop for that. If, if I did have a piece of music, I could literally I could lit literally drag it into this. It might come up just like this. What I can do is I can go into edit song. By the way, this is how somebody would manually input one as well. Um, if Dream a Little Dream of Me Royal 608 was created as an MP3 
prior to August 14, I can click data lookup. I can search by label down here, or I can search by title. So let's do dream a little. So these are all the dream a little dreams, MP3 pieces of music that were created prior to August of 14 when that, uh, when that uh, piece of product disappeared. Um, you'll notice that uh, Royal is not up here because it wasn't. So, but let's say this was a, um, let's say this was the hi-hat version. I can't click here, this doesn't do anything. If I click on the HH5212, then it, uh, it, it populates all this information here. It gives you the title, Kip Garvey did it, it's the singing call, uh, there's a plus um, cue sheet to it. Uh, here's the in instrumental that came in right here. I would have to uh, manually or add the, the, uh, um, uh, the vocal if I wanted it. This one didn't generate the beats per minute and uh, I can manually uh, put in a cue sheet this way. I can find my cue sheet, double click it and it'll, it'll go in there. If the cue sheet is not available, so now Dream a Little Dream of Me has already come up here. So if I were to have my cue sheet file on screen, I could simply hold the shift key and then drag that cue sheet right onto that blue bar where Dream a Little Dream is. I would let it go and the cue sheet would be married up. And now it would be showing down here as a cue sheet. And you could click on the, the cue sheet to uh, uh, to see it. Uh, that that's kind of essentially things to do. Uh, as I said, I did a drag and drop of I'll be there. Uh, I was playing with it because I'll be honest, I haven't had to do that, that part of this in, in a very long time. Um, but uh, this is exactly the way it I'll be there uh, with the two in parentheses, exactly the way it's titled in the folder that I dra drug it from. But again, I can right click, I can edit the song, and I can do whatever I want with it. I can now leave it, I'll be there. I can put in, Mike Goff just did it. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, I'm sorry, we don't have main name, let's call it something else. Uh, I had a drop down, what happened to my drop down? I don't know. I can put in a comment, uh, and I can play with it down here. So. Again, that's that's kind of the, the short version of how DMM works. Again, keeping in mind, this was done in the early times of of uh, of, of of the of the tech world, so it's not as easy as as Tomas's version. Um, I'm gonna stop that and bring up the PowerPoint one more time. Anybody have any questions, comments? Mike Sikorsky, are you out there? Yes, I am. I muted myself. Okay, unmuted Mike Sikorsky. So that's where you see that uh, this that this is really. I don't believe that this is really a program, unless somebody just has a whole lot of time on their hands, um, would want to move from from Square View to to this. This functionality is essentially all the same. The layout's just a little bit different. The technology was not as as it was uh, today back then. Uh, if it had been, then perhaps something along the lines of uh, Square View would have, would have been created. But this was essentially uh, probably the best thing that uh, that uh, Bill Hyman and the guy that he hired to build this uh, could come up with. So drag and drop music, as I said, um, what it'll do is it'll drag the music into the an MP3 folder. If you don't have, I think music, right, D DMM created an MP3 three folder if you did not have one. And uh, if you've got all of your music would have to be in maybe your C mu pattern music folder, for example, if you wanted to use DMM. So then you would, uh, as you were, were dragging and dropping a piece of music into DMM, it would auto automatically move it to this MP3 folder. And it would not be, it would no longer be in the folder that you just drug it from. So I went through this here, right click, do an edit. Show data, I showed you how to do that. Again, only music up until August of 2014. Um, 
Um, I tell you, uh, uh, Bill. Mike? Yes, sir. Uh, if you're sharing a screen, it's not showing, and Mel Wilkerson has his hand up for a question. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry, I did that. I guess I didn't do that correctly. Okay, uh, who's got a... Who's got a question? Yeah, just, just, just a question. The DMM instructions that are posted that go with the program on the web, uh, are they going to be updated with the, the changes and whatnot that you're showing here today? Because it's still the 2018 version, I believe, the last one I read. Right, and DMM has not changed since then. Okay, so it, everything works the same. There's a couple of features that, like in the drag and drop that are working a little bit better. It's just just terminology, anything else, but everything else works the same as per the instructions? Or perhaps it, it is just that, my friend. Um, okay. Yeah, Bill and I worked on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, on the instructions extensively back in uh, it actually looks like we did that back in 2017. Is that what you said? Um, yeah, I think I think the last revision that I read was 2018, but it could be 2017. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, uh, I'm pretty. Oh, well, it says okay. I'm I'm working on a revision, but but not necessarily to update anything. I, I would really, really, really like to make this as small as possible it is only 24 pages with the last two pages being uh everything that bill has done um so beta version tests uh let me go i'll go back to to the powerpoint in just a second uh august 2003 beta test version released uh so that was my fault uh for you german speakers out there that's my failure um and then he had version releases through four, five, six. Um, he was paying a guy to do all this stuff. Uh, I think it was done in C++, something like that, if anybody knows anything about coding. Uh, 2007, version 3.5. The last time he did anything was August of 2017. He released with a simplified install for new subscribers. So that was the last time Bill uh, funded any changes to DMM. Um, so yeah, there was, a, and, and again, back in 2017, I went through this extensively trying to make it, uh, as user friendly as possible, uh, keeping in mind that I knew DMM pretty much inside and out, uh, also being a caller, also using it and just try to make it, uh, something that was, uh, that was, uh, easier to, to read, um, so can you see my drag and drop uh, music page on, on screen? Is that where we are? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions before we proceed? Okay. Um, so again, this that's where, where I was talking about uh, show data. Uh, in this case, it showed uh, uh, a piece of Sting music. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, I did have it right there, but I didn't uh, play with it at all. So this was just uh, something that we've already been through. Again, the cue sheet, like the music, cannot be in the MP3 folder. It has to be someplace else, because as you drag and drop it over to that over to that particular blue highlighted piece of music, because your your cursor has to be right on that, otherwise it'll it'll be tucked in with another piece of music. So again, uh, it, it'll be uh, done there. Drag and drop to the playlist. As I said, once you open the playlist, you can drag and drop all your music. Uh, that you want to put in it. You can have as many as you want. Um, what I have done over the years is I've kept all of my playlists and in the DMM folder in C Digital Mu Music Magician, I created a folder called Old Playlists. Um, that way when uh, when my playlist, when I click on the playlist drop dropdown, uh, I don't have 50 bazillion playlists. Uh, I've only got the handful that I want to be seeing but all my other existing playlists are, are still in existence. Um, you've got all these uh, all these things that you can do up here. Um, you can create a cue sheet within. Uh, just like just like Tomas a square view, it can read HTMLs. Uh, it should be able to, to read any any Windows document, be it a DOC or a DOCX. Um, I think Bill might have also included Excel. I think he. Uh, had the had the program or drop that in there, so those are pretty much uh, 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 I think uh, 
Uh, the other programs have as well. Um, the programs list and definitions. Um, I tap my. <laughs> I don't know how to go back. How do you go backwards? Oh, easy. Backspace. Um, programs list and definitions. Uh, you can you can easily download those from uh, from the the Color Lab website. Tuck them into the tuck them into the folders that uh, that that have those uh, in in there. And that way you can have your, your list and your definitions if that's what you want to do. Okay, Mike. Yes. We got a question in the chat. Um, can you label your playlists such as the dance and date so you can look at it and see what you did at that dance the last time you were there? Yes, let me show you. So, so I'm going to stop this year because I haven't figured out how to do it otherwise, okay? Let me bring back up... Uh, DMM and share that. Okay, it's telling me that it's shared. Okay. Mm, it so is it's shared, right? Yes. Playlist. I want to add a song to a playlist. Let's just take this one. Let me do a right click. Do my play uh Somehow the playlist got uh, got sent there. So I'm going to close this one for the person that's looking. Uh, I don't really care about saving. So let's do a right click and add Irish stew. And it did it to me again. Irish stew to the playlist. And let's uh, add this other one. There is a way that I can make setting playlist on top that way it won't disappear uh, behind uh, let's just go ahead and kill that off and do it again add to a playlist so there's Mishi Hoedown there's another one there's another one so I want to save it as um, E double A S D C double A S D C uh, annual Name, though. Student dance January. So now now it's titled. When you see it up under playlists, there's my EAASDC annual student dance January 2024. Did that answer your question? Yeah, the basis of the question, it was one of the other ones. Um, I know in SQV and a couple of programs, there's some difficulty in finding where you're saving your playlist without saving a whole bunch of horrendous documents. Just being able to go and if you do a dance annually every year, or every six months, you're doing a dance or you go to visit the club, you can look at what you called last time and say, OK, I'm doing new stuff this time. That's all. That's I gotcha. And that's exactly what I used to do back in Germany. So, again, yeah. when I click on playlists up here, all of them that are in the folder will, will be listed here. So if I've got 10 playlists, there will be 10 in this list right here. Okay. Yep. But yeah, I, 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 I used to do the same, same thing. I didn't, I didn't want to be playing essentially the same music as, uh, as I did the last time. Although I always had, although I always had my favorites that I, uh, that I like to play because a lot of callers over in Europe like to start uh, uh, playing all this new stuff that they that they uh, download from 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 uh, uh, karaoke sites and so forth, or they'll be a, buy a piece of music for a couple of bucks and you know they'll play stuff. I I, I prefer personally I, I prefer a lot of the not the oldie oldie stuff but the older stuff like the seventies eighties nineties that music producers put out. Uh, a lot of country western with a lot of good beats. That's the kind of music I I like. Uh, so we did that easy use all those uh, things right there. So again, library.han is the most important file um, for for anyone that's that's using using this multitude of operations uh, of options, just like everybody else. Uh, no different. 
I think it's just a, me a matter of of layout and more importantly, the difference between, uh, I've never looked at Vic Cedar's uh, program, so I have no idea, but I have seen, uh, as a matter of fact, I was vis visiting somebody here in Panama City yesterday and he uses Square View. Uh, so I was looking at that, I've looked at Square View over the years and uh, I see that that uh, he came out with the easiest way, just put all, all of your, your patter into a folder and then, uh, uh, click on that bar up there and 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 then put your stuff uh and put the line where the, where the where the folder is and wham bam it's all there i mean that's great you, you can't beat that for sure so that's that's essentially what what i've got to share here guys and gals as far as my powerpoint file is concerned Just for reference i put the links to the uh, dmm the software and the instructions in the chat for everybody they can Go there and copy the links. Okay. Um, I would, uh, I need to get back with Bill. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, when we were transitioning, he showed me how to get into the correct website to modify uh, the, the page. So uh, I need to get with him to find out how to do that again. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to put my own spin on, uh, in particular. Uh, I do want to take I do want to take this uh, buy now button off of there. I, I just don't see see any reason to to offer DMM for a price. Uh, I'm just looking for uh, to give uh, to be an option at no cost to to the newbie callers or anybody that would like to play around with this. I'm more than happy to to let anybody have it. Whether you've been calling for sixty years or or you've been calling for a month and you only have five pieces of music. Uh, I I just want to make this available for people. That's that that's about the extent of it. Yeah, because Mike Sikorsky is definitely not a newbie. No, I know. I, I got a lot of his music too. Um, uh, you do need either uh, WordView, which is no longer available on the internet, but I do have the WordView install file that I can email to anybody. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you've got uh, Word documents, of course, you need Microsoft Word. Um, Bill and I have never have never encountered any problems with any Windows version or any Word version. I take that back. There was one Word version that was having an issue, and um, uh, I got a techie friend back in Germany. Uh, he went out searching, and he found a registry entry change that could be plugged into somebody's machine, you know, installed on somebody's machine, and then that version of, of Word would work. But otherwise, as I said, Word Viewer, Microsoft Word Viewer there. Um, PDF, uh, I would I would recommend for folks that have PDF files, a lot of us do. Uh, I don't know if you, the music producers are doing, um, uh, are doing options when you download. I don't know if they've got a Word document, an HTML, and, and a and a PDF version. I I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I have, shame on me, but I haven't bought music in a long time. But I happen to use. I happen to like Adobe. So I I've got Adobe for those PDF files to open up. Uh, pretty much any any type of music should be able to play on DMM, just like the others, whether it be an MMA or an MP3 or all those other extensions. Um, so again, I would just like to like to preface that this was. Built, as you saw back in 2000, well, you didn't see because I didn't share that part of the screen, but it was uh, built in August of 2003, way back when we didn't have the technology that we do today. Um, but I've liked it. It's the only thing I know. A lot of people only know Vic Cedars. A lot of people only know Square View, and they don't want to change. Understandable. Not a problem. Just want to make this available for anybody that, that might be interested, um, uh, particularly Focusing, focusing on newbies uh, just starting out. What about the uh, what about the code? Uh, when you install, you're talking about when you install DMM. No, I mean the uh, I mean the source code to to the program itself. Uh huh. Uh, I would have to ask uh, Bill to refresh my memory, but I think it's something like like C plus something that's old, but I do have. Have I do have the uh, uh, the computer that holds out all that information? 
I just don't have anybody to uh, to, to mess with it. Are Are you planning to release that as well, or? I haven't even opened up that computer. Uh -huh. <laughs> I haven't even plugged it in to make sure it worked. But Bill sent it to me one day after we chatted about it because we just didn't see we just didn't see any benefit in him just chucking it in the trash. So I said, yeah, Bill, send it here. Maybe one day I can find somebody that knows the coding for this. And if they're willing to uh, to do something at a at a reasonable price, then there are some things that I could do with DMM. Um, if you if you wanted to put that in the in the public domain so that other people would come along later and um, mess with it, um, uh, I can help you do that. Really? OK. OK, I, I have no problem with that. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a place to put it. There's a the place on the Internet that uh, doesn't cost anything to put uh, projects like that so that people can find it and, you know, make their own version or make improvements or whatever. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, but when you do that, there's a way to control it. There's, in other words, nobody's it's, obligated to contact me and say, hey, Mike, I can do this for you. They can no, just play no, whatever they want. No, if you put it out there like that, um, uh, you, uh, you generally put it out there with a license agreement that says something like, anybody can do whatever they want with this as long as you uh, retain the original credits to it. Uh-huh. Oh, I got you. Okay. Okay, thanks. You're Chris Stacy, right? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Um, guys, like I said, uh, up until two years ago, uh, I was over in Germany for 30 years. So I, I know the people like Al Stevens, who who back in 14 moved to Alabama. Uh, he and I meet up uh, every, uh, every few months. Uh, we're good buds. Uh, I went to his caller school in 1997 when I was still a dancer because I wanted to find out how all this magic worked because it just blew my mind even having danced for, for like three years. So I went to Al's uh, beginner caller school. I think a couple of years later, after I was just starting, I was starting a club. Um, I went to a uh, in intermediate class. So I've known Al Stevens for a long time. Um, who else is over there? Um, some of you may remember Kenny Reese, who uh, unfortunately passed away a number of years ago from brain cancer. Uh, he was a big Kenny, name. Dave, Jim Henderson, Klaus. Uh, Bill Dave Wilkerson Preskitt, has his hand Klaus. up. <laughs> a number of them. Mike, uh, Mel right. Wilkerson has his hand up for a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Shoot. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I started over in Germany myself, Mike. Uh -huh. That was in the early 80s. You were still young then. <laughs> Um, my question is, uh, the features that are built into a lot of the software programming coming out now, when you save or you make changes, and yours has the adaptability, so say I want to up, up the bass, drop drop the treble, change the tempo down to 124 from 126 and whatnot on any particular song, and every time right. I use that song, it's that way. Now, the other programs are offering those features. Once you make changes to a particular piece of music the way you like it, you save that in the program. And it saves those changes so that they're every time you use that piece of music. Does DMM do the same thing? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. And that's why no, that I just I didn't see it on your list of features. That's why I was asking. Okay, sorry. Uh, and Mel, that's why uh, anybody that using that that uses a program, that's why it's so important to to back up, save a copy, whatever the current terminology is, um, back up that library dot dot hand file. If you're doing a lot of stuff, you're adding a bunch of music and, and over a week's period calling a couple of dances, uh, you're changing those those settings uh, on the player. Um, mm -hmm. When you get home, you need to save that library.hand file. Um, and then if 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 you do, do the same thing again in, in a couple of months, you add a bunch of music, you do a lot of changes, uh, at, save that copy. Don't overwrite the previous saved copy say i save every single one of them so i might have library dot hand in parentheses 24 meaning i've got 24 versions of my library dot hand because each one of those uh had had something different changed i just want to have every single one of them to where i've always got something because when your computer goes uh tango uniform for you military people dod civilian as well if you know what tango uniform means 
Um, if your computer does that and your library dot hands gone, um, you got to start from scratch. Which to somebody recently, uh, I've got to call him back this evening because he just got a new computer and went to Best Buy and I, I walked Best Buy to uh, reinstall D, reinstalling DMM for him. But of course he needs to uh, manually input all that, all the, all that music back into his computer. Chris has got his hand up. Yeah, it's just uh, just following on from uh, Mel's question. Uh, when you make the changes and stuff, uh, I know in Square View, the button you can hit that basically says, "Oh, erase all my changes. Just just put it back to the way it was with you know no EQ and the and the default uh, uh, loop stops and uh, no, no tempo change and so on and so forth." If it's got a little sort of basically a button that resets the info for that song, uh -huh, like an undo button or something. Yeah. Yeah. No. If you were to, if you were to have, if you would mess with the equalizer, you could simply uncheck it here, and then that piece of equalizer would remain the same, but but the player would no longer use it. Um, uh, you could uncheck use loop. Um, uh, let's see here. Well, the main thing is the uh, the main thing's the tempo setting. Really, is the one that yeah. I, think I I I'll fiddle with that one, and then I okay. may not save it. And but if if I do save it, then later on I might come along and say, "Oh, I, that was a big mistake." And then I hit the little reset button, and it goes back to the original tempo that it came with. Okay, I got gotcha. you. No, uh, this if tempo was over here to the right, you just have to drag it back to zero. But see, those are all the neat things that uh, uh, that somebody like Vic, because he created his own, and Tomas created his own, uh, they can easily. You know, before they go to bed, op op open their uh, open their program and, and make those uh, make those nice changes. Uh, and I know Mus is a is a is a techie. He writes, I believe he writes he writes code and stuff. So that's how he's able to do his own, which is absolutely great. And his program has been uh, has been a super program uh, for square dancing and round dancing and so forth, without a doubt. And John has his hand up. All righty. Yeah, Mike. Um, I actually bought DMM many years ago, and um, I used it for some time. And uh, the main reason I stopped using it is because I like a second computer available at all times. And to shift it from one computer to the other, I had to buy another version. Um, now that it's free... Is it possible to 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 actually copy the DMM file from one computer to another? Absolutely. So again, you just copy uh, the whole. Again, uh, uh, the important just install it on the next computer. Uh, put all of your mir mirror the 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 second computer. In other words, make sure if your music is in C My Music, make sure you have a C My Music. You know, it's going to be the same. And the most important yep. file after you install is to drag the library.fan over to the digital music magician folder, click on DMM, open it up, and all your music and everything is right there. And you that wouldn't includes have to all the, all the but, modifications. But I'll, I'll, but I'll be honest, I didn't I don't believe that uh that Bill ever ever told anybody that they had to buy another version to put it on another computer. I, I always I always thought that that Bill, once you paid, you paid. That was my understanding with Bill. Uh, now maybe maybe some people misunderstood. Um, somebody, for example, I'm not going to mention his name, and I don't remember his name, but I got something that said PayPal. You got ninety nine dollars. So I went over there. I saw what it was. I refund refunded his money because ever since that I've known Bill and I have always said. Once you pay, you never pay again. Um, so I I refunded his money. I sent an email, haven't heard back from him. Uh, and then I realized he 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 was a DMM user. So he must know something about DMM. But apparently he thought he had to buy it again. But if anybody clicks that button, JV, um, I'm, uh, their money's going back to him. That's why I would like to get in this, uh, um, uh, in, into this in the next week or so. And actually, delete this uh, this buy stuff up here. So no, just just go to the just go down here, 
Um, sorry. Just go down here and download it. You know, install it. The code will come no. up. Ring me up. Send me a send me a text. Send me an email. Give me the code, and and I'll give you the key, and away you go. My email, by Thank the you. way, is uh, my. You're welcome. My email, by the way, is Mike. Dot golf. That's Oscar Foxtrot Foxtrot 1957. Giving away my date of birth at Gmail. Or like Mike Sikorsky did, he uh, Mike uh, um, emailed me from the info at Digital Music Magician, uh, and I've got that uh, that mail file on on my computer as well. So, but I'll I'll be changing that too because I I don't I don't need that one up there. People could just write me direct. But yeah, um, I'll let anybody have it right now, JV. And if you want uh, if you want to put it on five computers. Do it five times. No, no worries, my friend. Thank you, yeah, John. That ninety-nine dollars was probably the refund that came to you. I think you deleted it with that ten million from the Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Sikorsky asked a couple of interesting questions in there, and I don't, I don't use uh, DMM. I use SQView, but I've been asked a couple of questions. But Mike does schools. Uh, uh, Mike, I'm I'm just going to let you ask that question because it, it's in yours, but you do that a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just speak up because uh, I have been a Square View user all along, and I got introduced to that first, and and so I got comfortable with that, and I keep learning more and more about it all the time, and I have to know about it uh, about these things. And I personally would not advise anybody, for instance, buy Vic Cedar's program because number one, mainly they got to buy it. And new callers are scrounging for, they're not making enough money really to, to afford a Hilton for crying out loud. I mean, they don't need to be spending money on a program. Yeah. And, and they're not, they're, they're just trying to get started. And so my question was now that it's free, uh, could anyone offer an opinion as to why they, a, a new caller, would definitely want to choose Digital Music Magician over Squareview since they're both free. They're equal. They're equal choices monetarily. If they're if they want my expertise, it's going to be Squareview. But maybe they would want somebody else's who is an expert on DMM. I just want to know sure. the benefit to it. I can think of a couple of benefits based on what you said here today of why I think Squareview might be easier to use. And so I just want to know if somebody wants to speak on behalf of Digital Music Magician. We can start with you, Mike. Um, I, I know people like uh, Virgil, For which is that? What's his name? Virgil, Virgil what? Uh, Virgil Forbes, I think is his name. I know Virgil. Uh, yeah, uh, Virgil might have have, an, have have a good thing for that. Um, uh, I, I, I can't argue against, I can't argue against Square View, Mike. So I, I, I I don't think I could say anything to convince somebody to do DMM over Square View. I, 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 that's that's my honest opinion. Thank you for your opinion. Uh, could I get you to show us something? As long as I don't have to take off any clothes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the how how in the picture right there that's on your screen right now. The uh, Q, I, I think that's the Q sheet that's up there, right? Or is that the this editor? One, this one here? Yeah. Yeah, that's a Q sheet. And I can see that uh, uh, that it's a, it's a Microsoft Word um, file. So you literally see everything from Microsoft Word right here. And so you, you can, can make that. So right there, you can make that. You can make the font bigger so you can read it at, at a glance easier. Yes, you can. Um, I always use touch screens. I won't ever buy, buy a computer without it. Uh, I can use my two fingers and I can uh, I can I can increase the you're right. Can, can you see that I'm increasing it here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah same I, thing. I think you, I think your question mark was that that's displaying as a word file. Can you edit right. that? Can you change the font, Correct. say, up to 24 point and whatnot in the yes, viewer? Yes. Yes. Of course, now that's where that. now you there for me, that's a that's a plus because I have a really hard time getting that font size 
in square yeah. view to go up and stay up. Okay. And, and for and for me, that's probably one of the biggest pluses uh, in answer to Mike's question. I, when, I, when I'm doing reporting, I put my cue sheets in Word, and depending on who the record producer is, they'll send it out in Word, in PDF, and in um, an HTML. But it's always good to have an editable Word file because you can edit, you can just copy and paste in new choreography, you can delete it, or you can change it to 24 point font as you go. Yeah, and, thanks, and that, sir. That's, that's a big bonus. Yeah, okay. Th thanks for that question. Uh, I, I should have said that, uh, but clearly I wasn't uh, uh, 100. I was only 99.999% prepared on this uh, on this presentation. But yes, as, as long as it comes up in a, in a Word, uh, using the Word program, you, you can manipulate that, change it. You can even create, you can e even create a, a cue sheet. You can click on cue sheets up here and click create a cue sheet and you can do one right, right inside, or you can do it as Mel and a lot of us others do is you just open up a word, word document, create it and, and file it away. But, but yes, you can, you can edit this and, and manipulate it. Uh, maybe you don't want to uh, change it permanently. Um, so you can just uh, use your mouse pad or, or your screen to, to uh, increase the size of the text just just within this window uh, as you're uh, as you're uh, playing the song yeah. so that's the, that's, uh, the other uh, thing with that sorry sorry i'm just just to follow up on that with the editor if your cue sheets you can save save that as a pdf from uh, dmm as well because you're going to be saving the file you can also save you know one world mainstream one world basic one world plus and because of that drag and drop feature on the screen, you can add whatever cue sheet you want in an instant without having to go through all the song and dance that you can do with Square View. So that, that's a lot faster manipulation if you're comfortable with the Word program. Okay, thanks, Mel. But Mel, you said you don't use DMM, correct? I don't use DMM, I use Square View, but I'm, I'm like Mike, although he actually knows what he's talking about most of the time. I People seem to think I know what I'm talking about most of the time, so I get a lot of these questions, so I have to go and look it up. Okay, I got you. <laughs> okay, thanks for bringing that question up. I Yeah, that one did kind of uh, slip my mind that uh, the cue sheets can be manipulated within its own window. Yes, Ross, that's what, I think that's what he's saying. Is somebody else talking? I'm not hearing anything. Uh, no, Roz put a question in the chat and said, so that, so that okay. would mean you could add your own figure easily. And yes, you've answered that. Correct. If it, assuming it was an editable file. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I just make shit up. As, pardon me. I make stuff up as I go when I'm calling. Okay. Um, pattern just, and, just, uh, and singing. I was wondering, have you still got uh, DMM open as the program? Yes, I do. Want me to go back to it? Yeah, if you could. Sorry. And I do apologize. I think I'm going to be putting you on the spot here for a second, Mike. <laughs> Not so here. Okay. All right. Um, sharing now. Okay. So if you pull up your cue sheet with the Word document in there. I'll be honest. I don't know. This one's being viewed with the cue sheet viewer. Um, and I don't think I, uh, I didn't drag another cue sheet into any of these songs. Oh, okay. Sorry. Is it is it possible for you to have it to auto delete all of Buddy Weaver's photos? <laughs> or draw a mustache on it? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Or if I just double click on it, then the then the cue sheet comes up and the uh and the music's already ready to be played yeah. over here. Yeah. So that that's a PDF or yeah, that's a PDF file. Yeah. Although it's coming up in Q Sheet Viewer as opposed to Adobe, but yeah, sorry. What 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 were you gonna what were you gonna ask about? No, that? I was I was just looking at it. Um, 
you had the word editor up there for some people that have Adobe. There's also the Adobe editor file and whatnot, but I was just looking in the word. We just do a quick run through on how to edit that cue sheet or change, change a lyric or change a piece of choreography if you had it. But if you haven't got one, mm -hmm. load, don't worry. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got, it on, I've got uh, all, most of this stuff on an external drive, which I left downstairs. I didn't want yeah. the. Uh... No, no biggie. Okay. But uh, that's going back to what you were asking, Mike. If, if you're comfortable with Microsoft Word or with making PDF files or even saving Word documents or PDFs into HTML, it's a much faster way of doing it. In Square View, you either have to do everything on Word, open up an HTML file, a blank sheet, associate the file, then pull up the editor and paste everything into the editor, or you have to know how to write and create HTML files, which I don't. It's, it's about a five-step process, but here editing something in Word, you can save it in Word or save it as a PDF or as an HTML right from the program. That's a major time saver once you have your choreography down. Can you do this when the, when the cue sheet comes up on, uh, on Square View? Can you scroll? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see, I can, uh, can you do that with, with Square View? No. Okay. Okay. So your, yours is an implanted view. You can also, I believe, make that full screen once the music's playing in the background. Sure. And then you just a page width and you can just scroll it down or put one page on that you can easily right. see. Correct. And that's Hence the reason why I have a, a big lap monitor. <laughs> And that's, that's basically the reason why I started, I've always been able to, I've been doing karaoke files, making karaoke files long before I started calling and not being able to read, read the screen as a new caller, everything was so small, I couldn't read it. And I was just having too hard of a time trying to figure out the HTML and how to get it to go up to the right size. And now that it was a pain in the butt. So for me, it was easier just to make all my music, all my songs, make them into karaoke and use the mm -hmm. karaoke viewer in, in square view. But if I had, if it would have worked like this, I would have never even had to spend all that time making everything into karaoke. Yeah. So yeah, everybody's got their own way to those that write, use DMM. They all have their own way, how they like to have it set up their screen and stuff. Are you uh, able to produce a little frequently asked questions, types of questions, what it can do, what it can't, how do you do A, B, and C? Just just to add that onto your user guide. Okay, yeah, we've never done that. that. Yeah, that would be very helpful at answering some of the general questions because right now the my biggest answer is, uh, well, send an email to Mike Goff and They'll probably tell you how to do it. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me let me offer this. Um, where'd my PDF go? For what it's worth, here's the here's the first page of uh, of the README file. Uh, everything here is is a hyperlink. Yeah, I, I I put that from the website in in Word in the chat as well. Okay. But what would the FAQs be? I don't know. I I, I haven't had well, just that way. just just basically the same types of questions that you know. Can you save all the changes to each piece of music on the program so it's like that next time? Uh, how you know those those just normal questions that people would have, mm -hmm. and then you could answer that. You know, I could answer that question. It says, well, yes, you can. Question is, how do you do it? Well, here's the file. I'm not sure how to do it, but it's in here. If you click on this, click on this link, and we can work through it if if they're interested. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I don't have this on my computer. I've uh -huh. looked at it. 
and I've read it because I was asked to ask asked to answer questions on it, but I don't know how to use it. I am not comfortable using it, so I would have to be working through it to to get sure. it. Understand? And I generally, go to where I'm comfortable. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why we have Coke and Pepsi, you know. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> sort of uh, sort of answering Mike Sikorsky's question about why would you use this one rather than say Square View. Uh, is that you know they're they're pretty comparable. All of the programs are are fairly comparable, and and these two are are quite comparable. But uh, they're they're all going to have their different wrinkles. You know, one will have some little some little feature that the other one won't have, and you know some slightly different way of doing it. But sometimes those uh, those little features uh, turn out for particular people to be a deal, like the uh, uh, you know like being able to edit the thing and up the fonts increase the font size and save it and that kind of thing uh you know somebody will discover that and they'll go oh, this is the whole this is a reason right there to switch uh, or to start with uh start with this one but uh mm -hmm. it's really hard to make a comprehensive list of every single little feature and figure out who will think that's a, an important reason or what have you because they're you know they both do pretty much the same thing and pretty much the same way um they're just, you know, stylistically a little different. And this one's got that feature and this other one's got this other feature. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, uh, kind of kind of hard to answer the question, which one is, you know, which one's the best is, you know, kind of a little subjective. Um, Chris, I was using a wet pen that seems to have dried out. Uh, how can I contact you? Should I? I uh, I put my uh, email address in the chat a little while ago, and you should have a copy of that. But it's uh, Chris. Okay. It's uh, just uh, Chris at swing and circle spelled out dot com. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. One one of these days, I'll pull that darn computer out and uh oh geez that means i need to get a i got a keyboard i'd probably need a mouse an external mouse <laughs> i don't even know what that is anymore <laughs> an external mouse i could probably connect it up to this laptop i think i think laptops can now be connected up to uh to those old things that weigh 500 pounds that we sit on the floor <laughs> yeah well it'd be a good idea to uh you know uh put that stuff uh somewhere better <laughs> and somewhere better might be uh the uh the place on the internet that i'm thinking where anybody can uh anybody uh -huh. can get to it that okay way it, that way it doesn't uh whatever's in there that uh, might be uh useful is uh not you know lost to the uh, dustbin of history <laughs> okay and, I just sent you Chris's uh, email and text message. Okay. Uh, the last time I used I used this method, I did not have a problem seeing seeing the chat down the right hand side. Now I'm not finding it. Finding it. Is it called reactions? Are you no? no. Uh, are you full screen? I'm well, I'm full screen, but I'm but I'm seeing. I'm seeing uh, uh, three, six, nine of you at a time. Yeah, down at down the, the bottom, bottom, it should be to the left of share screen. Ah, chat, okay. Got it. Okay. See, when I was uh, uh, when I was going through those slides and talking, I wasn't uh, seeing anybody's questions. So, I thank you all for uh, for helping in that regard. <laughs> anything else uh i won't be going even as far as uh let's see dallas is probably a good 12 13 hour drive um but uh, i'm gonna have to skip color lab this year i've had an awful lot of expenses uh and i had to max out my credit card so i'm not going to make uh color lab this year but isn't it on the east coast somewhere next year go ahead mike yeah, Mike Sikorsky. Uh, I want to offer my deepest apologies. Uh, I will not make it to Caller Lab this year. And that is especially 
that makes me sad because not only am I on the board of governors and member of many committees, but I also have taken over the financial aspect of the credit collar coach ad. And, and I was looking forward to seeing everybody again. As it turns out, uh, Chris, well, Chris Stacy probably stuck and doing, he told me we got his eye patch, so that's how I got the good one I like. He's kind of stuck with it he, because of his eye problem. In my case, it's all cornea, so I'm actually having cornea replacement surgery on May on March 19th. Wow. And so uh, now I'm supposed to, uh, and so Caller Lab, follow that flight falls within the time frame when I cannot have any elevation changes. And so this, this is how it had to fit into my schedule and the doctor's schedules. And unfortunately, and I had to cancel dance in California because we can't even drive because you got to go over the mountain, a little bit of mountains to get there. Even a little hill outside of Quartzsite would do me in. And so, uh, again, I, I, I want to let everybody know it's with Divas Street, but I cannot attend Caller Lab. Hey, uh, all the best to you for the surgery, Mike. Yeah, Thanks. good luck with that, Mike. Thanks to everybody. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, unless I, there's anything else. I, uh, I think I saw next year's is in South Carolina, I want to say. Greenville. Greenville, South Carolina, right? Yep. Okay, well, we've been yep. we've gone over the hour for this, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording if I can find my recording button again.